The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time as we kick off the trading week. We kick off September. It's Tuesday morning. That was a little bit of recalibration uh, coming off the long weekend there. Happy Tuesday morning. Hope everyone had a great Labor Day weekend. As we kick into the action this morning, you got the S&Ps down about four points. We check out the action on a 10-minute basis early this morning, down to about 4,500. We just got quite a little acceleration up to 4,520. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by 44 points right now, trading at 15,471. We're trading up 19 points in the Dow at 34,902. And the Russell, negative by 10. You jump over to crude. How about it, right? Crude, accelerating higher, man. Uh, nine o'clock. Not sure what just got said. Somebody have something in the dead man. We just jumped a buck fifty. What was that Tuesday at nine o'clock in the morning in terms of crude catching quite a lift there? We have some action going on. You got the gold contract moving this morning, nineteen fifty eight right now. We jump over to the dollar index when you got commodities moving. Yeah, so what's going on right now? We got action across the board, even in the last few minutes. Dollar was up at almost 105. We pull back a little bit right now to 104.60. You jump over to yields, the story last week. And how about the retracement? How about it? And it's continuing today, down about 12 ticks. On Friday, you spike on the jobs number to 111.12. We're now a point and six ticks below that number. Pretty remarkable in terms of where we are with yields, considering the conversation going into the jobs number on Friday, the spike to 111.12. And just like that, we're at 110.07 on the 10 year, off by 12 ticks. You jump over to the 30 year. We're off a full 26 ticks. I mean, look at the give back, man. Just remarkable. The 30 year just traded off two and a half points from where we were Thursday and Friday, two and a half points. And so what that's meaning is we're getting a lower price and a higher yield on a longer term basis, right? I was having the converse, this conversation with my dad on Friday, just walking through how exactly yields are moving, what exactly that is meaning for the market, especially when you look at it, the two year versus the 10 year versus the 30 year really getting yields moving higher on the longer end of the curve. Not a lot of action happening from the one year to the two year. It seems like the market's figured out that we're basically in the ballpark of where we're going to be in rates in the next 12 to 18 months, right? So getting a, a lot of volatility over the next for a two year right now, not exactly what's been happening, but where you get a lot of yield inversion, right, is that you have the two year very high and you have the 10 year very low, indicating that we are in a higher interest rate policy right now which could lead to economic pain in the future as growth comes down from the Fed's tight policy. There you get inversion, right? Well, some of that is uninverting as you have yields rising, but rising on a longer term basis and not necessarily on a shorter term basis. And that's what you need to get that yield curve uninverted. A lot going on in that yield curve, though. And boy, we are early in the innings when you talk about a Fed meeting coming up in two weeks from right now, all but assured that they're probably going to pause. And then we go to November from there and we see where we go. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one to say the least. But this morning, back to the 10 year, right? 10 year down almost 13 ticks. You had quite the pullback on Friday, as we talked about the 30 year, just huge pullback. I mean, in, in you know, it's anyone's guess what exactly this is saying. Why are yields? going up on a longer term basis. Is the Fed going to have to stay tighter for longer to get hold of inflation? Or does it look like that the Fed might not have to be as tight for as long to limit this economy, therefore eliminating the risks of potential recession going forward, allowing for yields and growth to be higher going forward? It's all possible. We get to find out as the market marches forward and the next 12 to 18 months are going to be interesting. This is not over just yet, folks, uh, to put it lightly, as we still have a four handle. Remember, that CPI, PCE going up on a yearly basis, going up on a year over year basis for the month of what? August 1st, July, right? Going up 4.3 versus 4.2. And you got to keep in mind, OK, crude, put it on the radar, folks, because check it out. We've been talking about it. 
These are prices that we haven't seen since November. Okay, haven't seen them. We're breaking above the highs that we've been in since November. That is going to put a hurt on the headline inflation number, right? What's been happening? Headline inflation has been pairing. Core inflation has been persistent, okay? We're going to start running into some year-over-year -year comps on energy that are going to be pretty lofty when you start getting into months. I mean, you get into the month of December, November, you were in the middle of the month, okay? So that's not going to be a tough comp. But December energy comps, you started at 80 bucks, you made it to 70 okay? You finished at 80 All of these comps, let alone if you ever make it into March of next year, when you start dealing with comps on an energy basis of $67, and meanwhile, we're running right now at $87 on crude. So those headline numbers are going to be creeping up, and it's going to make the Fed's job even more difficult when it comes to time. Because what if we're pushing headline inflation, right? that's now in the fours and cores at three. Are you telling me with headline inflation at a four or something because of crude and energy that we're gonna go into a cutting cycle? It's gonna complicate things uh, as goes forward. We've been helped out tremendously by energy prices, but this thing is on a one-way trip, man. And check it out, this could be a nice A to B, C to D, the A point 67 bucks, the B point 85 bucks. What are you talking about? 1750, 1750 from 7750 brings us to $95 would be the projection. And guess what? That's basically just back at near the highs that we were at last November. Let's back this up a little bit further for energy prices. I mean, geez, you know. 9374, that's what we were looking at that high. You break above there and 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 you're at some lofty prices of 120 bucks before you know it but next projections 93 95 bucks right maybe you go back you test the highs in november 93 and change 93 64 was the high in october as well and that would complete the a to b c to d that we have going on right now on a shorter term basis and yeah i mean look at the volume now we had volume at these highs of 447,338 and we just came in at 389. So the real high there was 338. You did have quite a high volume bar before there at 447. But we got some decent bars that we just blew through that level at right now. And yeah, these are daily bars. And today we already have 200,000. So we'll see where we go. But keep your eye on crude, man. 8691, the price of crude. Now, I'm going away for a little bit of a vacation starting tomorrow. And the reason why I tell you right now is because we're talking about crude. We always talk Forex. Our man, Teddy Kegstad, and we'll have live shows every day at 9 o'clock, folks. Every day at 9 o'clock, we're going to have a live program while I'm away. Uh, thanks to our man, Teddy Kegstad. He is filling in tomorrow. Teddy's also filling in on Monday, September 11th. Just worked out that he could guest host on that day for me while I'm away. Uh, Teddy, also around... 9-11 in New York on that day. So I'm sure he'll be talking about that a little bit. That'll be a great treat to have him filling in. Other than that, we got our man Jacob Shoup. He's filling in Thursday, Friday, and a couple days next week as well until I'm back in about a week. Uh, but I mentioned it because Teddy's filling in tomorrow, folks. He is going to be doing the program for me, and he always talks a little bit of crude. I'll be interested to see what he has to say. I'm going to be listening. I'm going to be flying. Uh fortunate going on a little bit of vacation with Tommy. We're going to be flying to Spain, flying to the, the island of Mallorca for a wedding. Uh, looking forward to that. Getting away for a week, but fortunate to have some great guests. So Teddy will kick it off with you tomorrow. We'll be coming back with our man Kevin Hinks because it's Tuesday, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures right now negative by about nine points. We have markets slightly in the red as we kick off the trading week on Tuesday. To talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network Fast Market right here on Tiger TV, folks. Every day, 12 noon Eastern time, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at the Schwab Network, they got outstanding lineup of guests. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. Usually, we're talking three trades an hour. Options are involved and defined risk is involved in every single one of them. I've learned so much myself over the years. Please check it out. Uh, Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, start of the new week, start of the fall trading season, and uh, starting the week with a little bit of softness in some of the indices. Nothing to get too excited about, but there that should catch the attention of some investors. We don't have a big week for economic data. We do have a big earnings. There are some stories out there like, think of NVIDIA and if this China fund, a $40 billion, 300 billion won Chinese fund, uh, that could bring competition. That's why I think you've got NVIDIA and we keep beating the drum. It's the U.S. dollars higher. It's 10-year yields higher. And now it's crude oil spiking higher on some news out of OPEC Plus and production. So oh, crude oil was down to start the day, now sharply higher, Tommy. Yeah, that's spiking crude. As I was kicking off the program, Kevin, at 9 o'clock, and I appreciate the insight as always, I said, something's happening at 9 o'clock, folks. I didn't peg it, but there it is, folks. Up almost $2 from where you were just uh, less than 20 minutes ago. Uh, we didn't talk since Friday, man. Quite the move in the markets on Friday. I wanted to ask you, you, you referenced yields, of course, which tie into the dollar. Well, what did you think about what was happening, Kevin, in terms of the yields with the higher yield, especially in the 10-year, on the 30-year, on a longer term basis, man, off the back of that number on Friday, we really got a strong move on yields, especially after the knee jerk move. I got the 10 year right now up in the thinkorswim platform. Um, but what do you think the market is saying? I'm trying to wrap my head around it. I was having a conversation with my dad over the weekend. Uh, have you tried to walk your head? How do you think about that conversation when, boy, we had quite a move on yields to higher yield on the 10 year and especially on a longer term basis on Friday's move? What were you thinking about some of that action? Yeah, I thought, you know, with all the information that we got on Friday and last week, frankly, with, um, you know, it's 
it's the it's the sticky inflation data that I think that we saw from, you know, some of the inflation data that we got. All things considered, from expectations, Tommy, the inflation data that we got on Friday was lower than expected. They were looking for four point four percent. It came in, you know, four point three percent. The month over month was supposed to be point three. It came in point two, but, you know. Average hourly earnings, time of year over year, it's still a four handle, and some of the PCE data, it's still a four handle, and crude oil rallying, it may not be the core inflation data that it's affecting, but it's going to affect that shiny headline number that we look so at so closely. So, I think you know, could you see a re- reigniting of? Inflation, data. think about this, Tommy. You've got crude oil going higher. You've got all these labor negotiations going on, which now you've got next up to bat is the auto workers and the unions there. So they're preparing for a strike or higher. Now you've got some flight attendants in the airlines uh, planning for a possible strike. You've got labor negotiations that is all going to lead to higher wages. You've got higher crude oil. So sticky inflation might be what's in the pipeline. And so that doesn't mean that yields are going to spike significantly higher. But, Tommy, they came down from 3.62 to below 4.1 for a while, now recovering that slight, slightly from there. So I don't know how scary this is, but it certainly doesn't uh, mean yields should go significantly lower, Tommy. Yeah, it was just it, it was remarkable watching the market in terms of the knee jerk reaction off the number on Friday, and then of course the pullback and even the market pullback that we saw as well. You beat me to the follow up question, man, which is why I love talking to you so much about crude. We're now breaking above levels that we haven't seen, Kevin, since last November, and that number is probably going to start creeping back up. Is that number? It, and this is where I'm trying to wrap this around my own brain in terms of how that's going to work because I know that. Maybe the chairman, and I don't know anything in terms of what he's going to do, but I think the chairman, right, isn't going to have the the crude price dictate everything going on. But it seems like recently we, we've had the headline number maybe be in a three or something, and then you get a core that's a little bit hotter because we've been helped so much by crude. What do you think the chairman might have to say at some of these press conferences as we come into November? We're going to start getting some yearly comps where energy is actually going to be on the bad side of putting a headline number that might be a little hot the core will be a little lower. How do you think they might approach, you know, whether it's stopping cutting, uh, excuse me, stopping hiking, listen to me, or potentially even going to a cut as we have that headline number, maybe going back up to a four or even a five. If we're talking about, I mean, you get into December, January, February, or March, and we're going to be dealing with $67 crude that it's going to be copping against on a yearly basis. Do you think that's going to come into that policy? And how much do you think, I mean, it's a big question, but what do you think as we go forward to some of those comps on energy? Well, I think I think higher energy prices takes, you know, a spending power out of the U.S. consumer's hand, right? If you've got $100 and you go from trading, you know, spending $30 a week on gas to $45 a week, that cuts down some of the discretionary spending you have for other products. So could it hurt? Absolutely it could. How much damage does it do? What is What is that do for core inflation tough to figure out right yeah uh drone powell i think has got rates where he wants them i think drone powell would be fine if the data keeps working lower and it's not a straight line never is but if he sees good signs of of weakening inflation across the board he's going to He's going to hold. He's not going to move in September, I don't think. And I don't, even though we get a CPI number uh, September 13th, after that, we, we, we get the decision. So, yeah, I think that this, the good news is for the U.S. economy, Jerome Powell's got rates now where he wants them, which is restrictive. I think his plan is to let this restrictive level work on inflation and not go higher. That doesn't mean he won't, though, Tommy. The data will tell us. It's a pretty remarkable time to be in the market, and I appreciate you sharing your thoughts and insights. They're big, quick picture questions, and nobody's got all the answers, but I, it's just so remarkable now that you know, we've been dealing with these lofty prices, man. Everybody knows that inflation exists when you got, whether it's grocery prices, travel, you pick it, right? Um, 
But nobody's talking about that we've had crude basically, you know, so low. Now we're going to add, just like you say, man, everybody notices. I put my, I filled up my gas tank the other day, Kevin, it was $70 for the first time in a while. And I said, whoa, where did that come from, right? Um, so yeah, I, I agree. With that in mind, man, you mentioned it, we're coming in, not a lot of economic numbers, but do you guys have equities you're talking about to kick off the September trading today on Fast Market, Kevin? Yeah, uh, Zscaler is the first name. <laughs> after the bell. Like Folio is going to do a presentation on Lowe's um, and the re retail housing, home improvement. And then we'll look nice. at Airbnb. A lot of news about travel coming off of um, the Labor Day weekend. So we got three good names today. Deeper Lowe's and Airbnb, Tommy. Three great stocks. I pulled them up on that Thinkorswim platform. Uh, Kevin, I appreciate you kicking off the week with us, man. You have a great one. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today. We'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Have a great day, Tommy. You too. Check it out, folks. Fast Market from the Schwab Network, 12 noon Eastern Time. We'll be right back for the open. Bill King. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. You're looking at an S&P down about two points right now. We catch a little bit of a lift on the markets right now, jumping back to 4520 area where we were coming into about 9 o'clock in the morning. NASDAQ 100 barely in the red by 27 points right now. you got the Dow sneaking into positive territory, up by five. The Russell leading the way in negative territory, off by half a percent right now. We jump back to commodities with crude. Yeah, you look at it, man. 8723 is where we're trading at right now. And, you know, I referenced it, right? 
Kevin ref referenced it before I even asked him the question. Keep your eye on Crude because what's so interesting, I mean, he laid it out as he was talking about, you know, of course it's going to matter when you're taking that amount of discretionary income out of people's pockets that's going to the same amount of whether it's gasoline going into your car, right, energy going into your house, whatever it is. And at the same time, we have the student loan payments kicking in. And listen, that's not going to be the end of the world, okay? Student loan payments kicking back in isn't going to end um, – capitalism right you know but it matters that's the point how much does it matter that's anybody's guess all those payments come and due that weren't due for the last three years it matters uh crude prices pushing 90 dollars it matters on a year over year basis we come into march okay right we come into march and you better watch out if we get some lofty prices because you're going to see year over year energy comps that are through the roof on the cpi OK, and whether they're going to impact Chairman Powell or not, what's so interesting there is that may actually. And this is, you know, I'm just walking you through as I'm doing each step that could actually help bring inflation down, because what's going to happen? That's an energy spike that the Fed basically can't control. So what is it, what's it going to do? It's going to tighten everyone's wallet. OK, those spiking energy prices are going to tighten your wallet and it's going to bring down inflation in the other areas of the economy that are still persistent potentially okay this is where it's like how many levels deep do you go to find out which level is going to matter when push comes to shove and that's the difficult part in there as in you might get a lofty inflation number but if you got people dealing with student loan payments you got them dealing with 90 to 100 dollar crude i mean 95 bucks we've walked it through at the beginning of the show man no reason why you can't come back and test where we were in november of last year okay which is about 93.74 on crude prices so keep your eye on those crude prices, man, because we were just at 67 bucks about two months ago. Tough to imagine. Those are weekly charts. You're talking about 10, 11 weeks. You go from 67 to 87, just like that, man. Doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon as well. Yeah, let's jump over to the dollar index as we talk about it as well. Dollar index, 104.60 right now. All right, let's go over some of the action before we get to NVIDIA because, yeah, we have – nope, not that one. Here we go. We got some Fed speak out there. Christopher Waller says the central bank can proceed carefully with rate hikes. Uh, does not rule out further increases depending on data. I mean, who would, right? I mean, who would? Yeah, you can get some statements out there, but considering where we are on the data, you can't rule out anything. No matter that's that's the real deal out there. As you know, Kevin always ends it so well, saying, "We'll see where the data goes, right? Because that is what's going to drive where the action goes." Proceed carefully with hikes, as he says. There's nothing that's saying we need to do anything imminent anytime soon. We can just sit there and wait for the data. And I would agree, man. I would agree with what Kevin said as well. They're in a restrictive policy, okay? Now, crude prices in there, the worker strikes that we have going on, the new contracts that we have going on with those worker strikes, wages are still catching up, folks. People still feel like their wages need to catch up with the inflation we've seen, and they probably do. Because if you combine, I can't believe that you're talking about, I was doing it yesterday. I'm running towards the end of my, um, I've had my car for almost five years. And so it's almost paid off. And I can't believe it's five years, folks. It was April of 2019. Yeah, it seems like it was just before COVID hit. And COVID seems like it just hit. And that's going to be five years ago. So there's not five years of inflation because it wasn't ripping in April of 2019. Things really started to accelerate, what, 20, 2021, 2022, we're, we're three years in potentially. You're talking about 20 to 25 percent, folks. People's costs, Whether you, you start talking about rent, okay? You throw in rent in there. Um, you throw in, I mean, you throw in the ability to buy a house, which if you're paying somebody to work for you, they should have the ability in some capacity at some point in their employment to buy a house, Right. All of that stuff. Wages need to catch up. So there's going to be some pressure. Um, but the market reading this today saying that uh, there is nothing imminent that they need to do. They can proceed carefully is what they're talking about there. Nonetheless, that one comes up. All right. Talking a little bit bigger picture here, right? Interesting read from Bloomberg out here talking about NVIDIA. Okay. This one, yeah, out this morning. And it's talking about the potential bubble case. Okay. Now, you know, you should know that this is a possibility if you just pull their chart up, okay? That's potentially parabolic. That's a weekly going back five years. You really want to be freaked out, though, you put it on this chart, okay? Now, that's quite a chart, man. 
but that is a lot of optimism. Now, I heard an analyst uh, or talking head somewhere, I think on Bloomberg last week, talking about Cisco. They were comparing it slightly to Cisco in the run-up of the dot-com bubble, okay? The thinking was, right, Cisco makes everything that the Internet's going to need. They're going to take over the world. Well, guess what, folks? Um, Cisco is still a great company. You pull up Cisco right now. You're a company that's valued at $234 billion. Uh, still not where it was. Still not where it was back in the year 2000, 23 years ago. Okay, still not back where it was. It's a great company. You've had a lot of growth over the years. Never quite lived up to the multiples that were priced in when things got a little bit bonkers. Okay. Now, you take a look at NVIDIA. Uh, excuse me, Cisco. Now, just out of curiosity, okay, because they're talking about multiples. Well, you can see how this thing accelerates like kaboom, right? You go from $1 billion in 1994. These are revenue numbers, okay? This is historic revenue data for Cisco. Just giving you a quick glimpse on how you can still grow dramatically from where you are. And then what happens, though, is that you don't live up to the multiples because they're almost impossible to live up to. Okay, so we can jump to the Bloomberg story. But I just want to talk about this because... The multiples are getting lofty. They're getting pretty lofty, all right? And NVIDIA's living up to them so far, but boy, you talk about pricing in like everything, right? So you check out where Cisco was as they ran up to this acceleration, right? Where's the run start? Well, in 1995, they're trading at about a couple bucks. By the time you make it to 1998, they're at 12 or $15. And their peak is in early 2000, okay, with the dot-com bubble. Now, you go to their revenue numbers, right? You've got quite the acceleration here. And you can see the run-up, right? They go from $6 billion in 1997. They were at $2 billion in 95. They go to $12 billion. They double in revenue from 1997 to 1999. They almost double in revenue again from 1999 to 2001. They go from 12 to $23 billion. And then guess what? They go down. They go down. They go stagnant. They go stagnant. But then they continue to grow, all right? Then you had years, they go 28, they go to 34, they go to 39, they pause for a bit, they go to 43, 46, 48, they pause for a bit again. That was quite a pause, right? And now they're back to 57, okay? So there was some stagnant growth there from where? They're at 46 billion in 2012, and they're only at 49 billion in 2021. Well, guess what, folks? That's a nine-year period, okay, that began 12 years after the bubble, okay? I'm just putting things in to the NVIDIA time frame of where they are in 10 or 20 years. You have so much growth priced in, folks, okay? And look what Cisco did. It pulls back hard. And yeah, it's been a decent stock. You had a nice run up here up until, I mean, look at, even on those stagnating years, you've gone from 2011 at 15 bucks to 57, okay? And you never got back to where you were. So you be careful that if you is all I'll say, because that is some lofty market, optimism built a into a company that is now valued at $1.2 trillion. Oh, uh, we're on break. We'll be right back, folks. From the experts, you might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. I was running into the break there. I didn't realize it. I was too excited over NVIDIA and Cisco shares. Um, but just to finish up that thought, so you see the valuation at $1.2 trillion, folks. Optimism, price at all-time highs. I mean, we got a P.E. ratio here that's running at 111 right now, okay? Uh, yeah. The five-year average is running at 67 almost. Pretty remarkable when you look at those numbers, man, at $1.2 trillion. So be careful. Um, but I thought it was interesting looking at a company like Cisco and realizing, okay, a company like Cisco, to make the last point that I wanted to make here, okay, is that you buy into a company like Cisco in 1998, 1999, when the company's pulling in revenue of $12 billion, and you lose money by holding that equity up until 2023 when they're taking in $57 billion. Did you get that one? Okay, you buy that equity when they're taking in $12 billion in revenue, and you lose money in 23 years, 25 years, when they're taking in $57 billion in revenue. Not a lot of people, I think, would realize that that's uh, how things could play out, but you better with those multiples that we're talking about. Because don't say it can't happen. This thing just traded from 350 down to 105 And the world has changed since then, okay? But be careful, to put it lightly. All right, let's talk, uh, let's talk a little bit of Hollywood, Warner Brothers Discovery. They're trimming their estimates, but guess what? The market, they're okay with that. They're up by 2% right now. Warner Brothers Discovery expecting earnings hit of $500 million. Maybe the market was a little bit more worried than what they were talking about. I got two different articles. There's the Warner Brothers there. Cuts profit outlook as Hollywood strike drags on. Could affect financials through year end. Well, they don't know when it's going to affect them because the strike is still going on. Uh, they are now looking for full year adjusted earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization, 10.5 to 11 billion, down 500 million on both. That's earnings, that's not revenue, that's straight out profit, okay? At the same time, the company also raised its free cash flow outlook for the year to at least 5 billion, driven in part by the strong performance of Barbie. So there's the estimate, getting them up 2%, I guess. Now, what's interesting here is I've been seeing that a lot of these production houses, right, you're going to see numbers where their costs are going to go down because they're not spending any money to make anything, okay? So be careful in that you are going to see them bring more money to the bottom line for some of those costs not being incurred, but those are just going to get all pushed forward. So those things are going to offset once they get those productions back running. So we'll see. All right, we jump over to the story on crude. So this is what was hitting right at 9 o'clock. This one just as of 9.15 to at least pull up the article. Uh, the headline, I should say, Saudi Arabia to extend the voluntary cut of a million barrels a day until the end of the year. So that's the number that hits at 9 o'clock on the dot. They first applied the million barrels a day reduction in July, has since extended it on a monthly basis. That adds 1.66 million barrels a day of other voluntary crude output declines. Um, it adds two, excuse me, barrels a day. Yeah, so the crude market, going to be a wild card, to put it lightly. Because remember, remember when remember when they they announced this originally? Yeah, when did they just say it was? June? Because I remember this. 
Yeah, July. Okay. Let's pull up the daily. All right, I'm thinking of the March announcement, whatever they did, where the thing spiked and gave it up almost instantly. Well, guess what? Uh, we're way above those prices, man. I think that's when they first came out with a policy that was going to give them a lift. You back it up to July. Yeah, and that's where the acceleration really began, the end of June into July. So things mattering here is you got crude up a buck 75 this morning. We check back to yields this morning. You get the 10 year pretty much chopping around where we began the program at 110 and change right now. You jump over. We're talking about a yield right now of 4.23 percent. Pretty remarkable, man. Let's look at the yield curve for a second. Pull this over. So we got the yield curve. Yeah, look at the look at this is the same exact thing that was happening on Friday, right? Now you got higher yields across the board, but on a two year basis, you're talking about two basis points, you're talking about three, right? You go up to the 10, you're talking about five basis points, you go up to the 30, you're talking about almost seven basis points. Uh, still quite the inversion as you got the two year at 4.9 and the 10 year at 4.22. All right, look how far away they still are. The two year at 4.9. Even the five-year is at 4.3, rounding off 4.34, and the 10-year is at 4.23. But what will happen here, okay, as these longer-term numbers continue to rise, the yield curve is uninverting. It'd be interesting to see how that plays out where we go from there. So we'll see. But that's persisting, and that's basically the trend that was happening on Friday. Friday, it was just even magnified even to a greater degree. All right, jumping around to what else we had pulled up here. Let's see. Ah, let's talk a little bit of soccer. Why not? How about these numbers? Now, Messi, if you're a sports fan, first of all, if you're a sports fan, did you see the Colorado Buffaloes playing college football with Deion Sanders and his children this weekend? My goodness, that was quite a game. Caught most of the headline, um, the highlights afterwards. College football totally dramatically changed in terms of everything. But so is soccer, man. How about the numbers? 110,000 signups to the MLS season pass on Apple TV and the MLS subscriptions they're talking about here, both of them. He gets pieces of both of it as part of the deal. Apple TV, monthly U.S. signups, you talk about an uptick, man, okay? Monthly U.S. signups, they're pushing 833,000. Now, they saw 110,000 new U.S. signups the day he had his first match. 110, up from 6,000 the prior day. That was bigger than the day it became available and the day of the opening of the season. Of course it was, man. There's nothing like it. Apple, which has the exclusive rights to show MLS games and distribute the pass, enjoyed a bump in subscriptions to its $6.99 Apple TV streaming service as well. It's a, I wonder how much he's going to end up making. I hope he makes, you know, billions. Who know Why not? I mean, he might bring a whole new soccer revolution to, to the country, folks. And, 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 you know, it's pretty remarkable watching him play because the men that he is playing against are phenomenal athletes in their own right. OK, it's like if you play sports, folks, you know, I've been around phenomenal athletes in high school. And they're phenomenal in their own right, right? And then you get the few select from high school that go on to be phenomenal athletes in college. Then you get the few select that go on to be, you know, even have a, a chance at becoming a pro. Then you get the ones that actually make it as a pro. And then you get the guy who comes in and all those guys that are pros and he runs circle for them. All right. Now, listen, the European Soccer League, um, the play is not the same. That is the pros, basically, being in Europe versus the MLS, right? It's remarkable what Messi's doing, though. And that's as somebody that is a complete novice soccer fan. And look at the numbers. Apple signed a deal with MLS worth $2.5 billion last year that gave them the exclusive rights. What a deal at a time they did it. The 10-year deal wondered whether the partnership would help attract it. Well, guess what? They got it done, man. They sell the MLS pass for $12.99. Look at the numbers. Right? Look at it. Look at the numbers. The second game, $65,000. you are talking about 175,000 subscriptions basically overnight for two games and it's not going to stop i don't have this i might pay for it who knows um some big numbers to put it lightly in soccer soccer is a great sport for kids man you run around you kick a ball you learn some athleticism why not pretty remarkable numbers man and let's pull up the big dog apple you got markets selling off a bit this morning apple shares off about six tenths right now market off about three tenths right now s and is trading at 4506 one more segment don't go away folks we'll be right back
The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets pulling back a bit. You get the S&Ps down about 15 points right now. So let's jump around, right? We have the dollar index right now. You're back to 104.72. You drove down to 104.55 right now, but the dollar index up 50 pennies right now from where we were of the close of action yesterday, let alone Friday. Remember, Friday, we're at 103.40. We're pushing 105 right now in the dollar index. So you have dollar strength in this market. We have yields higher. You got the 10-year dropping okay as we were coming into that break that's why i'm doing a little bit of a wrap up here what were we just at man i just said it and we're already we're at 4.25 we're just at 4.22 4.25 is the number man just like that so we have higher yields you got a stronger dollar and you got a weaker market this is like the fed playbook all over again a little bit of a repricing is what's going on here right now as we're getting as kevin mentioned I mean, maybe crude is going to be a persistent factor here that's going to weigh on the market, right? Maybe that's going to lift inflation even further, causing yields to remain high and causing potentially the market to be weakened. As you have higher energy prices, S&P off 15, NASDAQ off 42, Dow off about 81 right now. We jump over to the gold contract, down about $13 at 1953 right now. Go with some volatility, and we jump to the VIX this morning. Volatility index right now trading at 1425 1429, I should say, all things considered, still very low volatility in that market with a 14 handle. 
on the VIX. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we wrap up the session this morning. Apple shares down about three quarters percent. We jump over to Microsoft up about two tenths percent this morning. Amazon down 1.3 percent for Amazon shares. We jump over to Tesla shares. How about those price differences in terms of drop in prices last week? Just talking about that. They're getting a lift this morning. Tesla up by 2.3 percent. We jump over to NVIDIA. We talked about them basically flat this morning for NVIDIA. I mean, folks, if you own NVIDIA shares, right? Maybe you sell some calls above the market. Worst case scenario, you got to sell it above where the market, you absorb some of the premium priced into a pretty volatile equity. So there's things you can do. I would just look at it, man, when you're pushing 500 on that equity. Folks, thanks so much for starting your Tuesday off. I hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chap. He's coming up next, folks. Have a great Tuesday. Have a safe Tuesday. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be gone for a week. We got live programming every day at 9 o'clock. Teddy Kegstack kicks things off tomorrow. Have a great one, folks.